So your IT certification is worthless because most people get tricked into thinking that certificates of completion are the same thing as being industry recognized, which is not the case. You'll never find a job posting looking for a Coursera, Udemy or Google certificate of completion. However, what if I told you there are in fact three highly in demand certifications if you work in tech, no matter whether you're in data, cybersecurity, coding, or even in management in IT. In fact, if you work or want to work as a tech freelancer or contractor, obtaining all three of these certificates can increase your hourly rate by about 20 to 40%. And if you don't believe me, take a look at this. So here's the first one. And unlike the next two, there's a big chance you've heard of this one before. Since it's not really a technical certificate, it's more of a way of working. Agile. Hate it or love it, it's still highly in demand for tech jobs. In fact, it's often still a hard requirement on job postings. But there's actually a dozen different Agile certifications to get. So which one should you get? Well, often for tech professionals, it comes down to the following three from least technical to most technical. Starting with the PMI ACP or the Agile Certified Practitioner from the Project Management Institute. This certification validates your ability to engage stakeholders, apply agile approaches and lead teams. It costs almost 500 bucks to take the exam and it consists of 120 multiple choice questions. It is a bit focused on leadership. So if you want a more general agile certification, I would go for the agile scrum certificate by exit. One hour for the exam, 40 questions, and almost half the price to take the exam. And the next one is still probably the most popular Agile certification you can get, the Professional Scrum Master. Even though you might not want to become a Scrum Master, it's still one of the most often asked Agile certifications because it proves your knowledge of Scrum and the Agile way of working. 200 bucks to take the exam, and you get one hour for 80 multiple choice questions. Can be a tricky exam to pass. If you want to get a bit more technical and more specific, you can also take the professional Scrum developer, although it's only valuable for developers. By the way, if you are specifically into data analytics, then there is a very specific list of certificates you should get because they can increase the value of your resume by a lot. You'll land jobs faster, you'll have more recruiters reach out to you, and you can get a higher salary or higher hourly rate. And guess what? I shared that specific list of certificates you should get as a data analyst in my free community called the 9 to 5 to Dream Life group. You can apply to join for free by clicking the link. Now on to the second certificate any tech professional should get. And this one used to be a very specialized certificate, only useful if you're in cybersecurity. But nowadays, cybersecurity is no longer a small function within a company. IT security is a must have in every sector, in every level, in every company. And there's only one IT security certificate that's often asked for by recruiters and hiring managers. And that's the CompTIA Security Plus or CompTIA Security Plus. I have no idea how to pronounce it. And here's a direct quote from the official website of CompTIA or CompTIA, I don't know. More job roles use Security Plus for baseline cybersecurity skills than any other certification in the industry. And this actually becomes obvious once you go through job listings as it's an often required certificate to have. So no matter if you're a developer that needs to write code that's actually secure, I'm looking at you, Vibe Coders, or a data analyst working with IT security data or just sensitive and vulnerable data, or whether you're just an actual cybersecurity specialist, this certificate greatly improves the chances of getting hired since it's compliant with the ISO 17024 standard. 90 minutes to take the exam, which consists of about 90 multiple choice questions, around 360 euros to take the exam. And now, last but definitely not least, just like IT security is a must have for any tech professional nowadays, so is working in the cloud. And there's three big cloud providers that recruiters will look for when scanning through resumes. Amazon, Microsoft, Google. And together they hold about two thirds of the entire market share of cloud computing. And they all have a fitting certificate you should get. You don't have to get all three of them, although you could, and it will probably improve your chance of getting hired. But if I were you, I would get them in the order of market share size, starting with the one that has the most companies running on their cloud, Amazon. With their AWS or Amazon Web Services, they have a 31% market share. And with Amazon, there's a couple of certificates you can get, starting with the least technical one, the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. And this certificate validates foundational high-level understanding of AWS cloud services and terminology. It's a good starting point on the AWS certification journey, and especially if you have no prior cloud experience at all. 100 bucks to take the exam, 90 minutes and 65 exam questions. And you can prepare for the exam through Amazon's exam prep plan on AWS Skill Builder, 
which is their online learning center. Or you can check out the AWS Cloud Practitioner Preparation Exam, which is a specific course on DataCamp to help you prepare for the exam. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out DataCamp. Now, here's the thing with cloud certificates. I always see on job posting, it's a nice to have, sometimes even a must have, but they don't specify which certificate you need. You just need to have some, some experience and have some certification with any cloud, AWS, Azure, or Google. So the cloud practitioner should be enough to show you have some AWS cloud experience. But if you want to go a little bit more hands-on, then you should check out the following certificates. The AWS Certified Developer Associate, if you're a developer, or the AWS Certified Solutions Architect. Now, the next biggest market share is held by Microsoft with their Azure being used by 25% of companies using cloud. And the no-brainer certificate to get is the AZ900 or the Azure Fundamentals. Five hours to complete the course on Microsoft's learning paths and $99 to take the exam, or half the price if you prepare using DataCamp's specific preparation course for this exam. Link in the description. With Azure, you can also go a little bit more deeper and technical if you want. And if you do, you can go for the Solutions Architect Expert and Azure DevOps Engineer Expert. And then last, but also least, Google with an 11% market share with their Google Cloud Platform. And there's three Google certificates you should get from least in demand to most in demand. One being the Google Cloud Digital Leader. There's just over 1,300 job postings on Indeed mentioning this specific certificate. It's not really technical, it doesn't really go deep. It's the go-to general cloud certificate to get. Then the next one is the Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect with almost 3,200 hits on Indeed. And lastly, there's the Associate Cloud Engineer with more than 6,000 job postings on LinkedIn mentioning this specific certificate. And as I said, having these certificates can increase your hourly rate by up to 40% if you're a tech freelancer. And if you're a tech professional, but you're not freelancing yet, then you might wanna check out this video on how tech freelancing actually saved my life. And now it could save yours. Cheers.